Hello, I'm Sandra Litt, an educator by profession and also a licensed lay worship leader. In June of last year, I completed the last of four training modules with the United Church of Canada. I also now serve as an online mentor for their program and facilitate small group meetings for lay leaders who serve the church across the country. It's always a privilege to share in their faith journeys as it is being here with you today. So welcome. Let us prepare ourselves for this time of worship, a time to become centered, a time to open up to God, to hear God's word. With enveloping love, God calls you. God calls me. God calls us. Come, celebrate, rest and be renewed by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. words of assurance. We believe that God is ever-present, even when we don't listen or turn away on purpose. God is with us. God is patient, empowering, always loving, and always forgiving. This week's scripture comes from those offered in the Common Lectionary for this week before Pentecost. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of John, chapter 17, verses 6 through 19, in which Jesus prays for his disciples. This passage is often referred to as the Great Prayer. As I was preparing for this week, I came upon some interesting debate around the origin and authorship of John. One current strand of scholarly thought is that John might have been an unidentified follower of Jesus rather than one of the 12 disciples, and that its writing was a shared responsibility occurring over a period of time. There is also debate about the gospel source, its stages of composition and narrative nature. The Gospel contains many lengthy conversations between Jesus and other characters to enlighten them about his identity and purpose. These conversations were to offer hope amidst the religious tensions of the time between the Jews and the Gentiles. It is also interesting that John refers to Jesus 
being in ministry for at least three years, rather than one as in the other Gospels. The book of John is also the only Gospel that references the historical reality of living under Roman occupation. Today's scripture passage is positioned at the end of the chapters that include Jesus' farewell meal with the disciples as he prepares for his departure. So with this framework in mind, let us listen to the words of Jesus' intercessory prayer. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours and you gave them to me and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. For the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me because they are yours. All mine are yours and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world. Protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. But now I am coming to you and I speak these things in the world so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I am not asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from evil. They do not belong to the world just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. Amen. You know, the trouble back then was that the disciples were still bound by human sinfulness and its consequences. Although they were empowered by the ministry of Jesus, they were still just a faithful few among the masses, subject to persecution and tested for their faith. In verse 18, Jesus commissions them to go out into the world just as he was commissioned to do so. A great calling, mm, indeed. He prays for their protection and sanctification. Sanctification, this is a heavy word, one that we don't hear often nowadays. Vine's Expository Dictionary defines sanctification as the separation of believers from the world in their behavior. Some things still remain unchanged, such as the nature of God and the continuing challenge of the nature of human behavior and the world's condition. On Facebook the other day, a memory popped up from a year ago. It was a picture of me and my daughter, Christina. We had our masks on and we had our gloves on and we were going on one of our outings to Shoppers Drug Mart. Who would have thought a year later, we'd still be doing the same thing. Yet, God continues to sustain us. Just as Jesus called and affirmed his disciples, we are called to live in, but not of this world. We are challenged to rise above these circumstances. We are challenged to dig deeper, to find joy in our current circumstances. We can't go to church to be together, but we've found other ways to make church meaningful and maybe even more meaningful. And we've had to spend more time alone with ourselves, time to learn how to be more reliant and faithful, to be more than our world, to be more than just our thoughts and feelings. Spiritual writer and Franciscan friar Richard Rohr says in one of his daily meditations that I receive that until we can allow this gospel message to move into the deepest level of our unconscious and change our worldview, 
that nothing substantial is going to change. He challenges us to become aware of three different images that are inside each and every one of us. Our image of ourselves, our image of God, and our image of the world. For it is in truly hearing God's message and seeing ourselves and the world through a gospel lens that we can become transformed. The words of Jesus' great prayer can still speak to us today as the ones who want to believe in more than that which the world can offer. In his prayer, Jesus acknowledges that everything he has comes from God. His pre-existence of the future glory, all from God. This desire for the truth to be made known was just not for the disciples, it's for all of us, so that we may come to know the joy that is in loving and intimate relationship with God. On our behalf, Jesus intercedes. He prays not only for his disciples, but for us today. We need joy, joy that will sustain us. Presbyterian minister Stan Reed says that people still enter into worship today with complacency, trouble in their hearts, about concerns, about a range of human conditions, and that our ways are not God's ways. Until we turn our ways into God's ways, we cannot access this joy that we talk of. This theme of alienation from worldly values, those who are aligned with the love of Jesus and those who are not. The polarizations, it runs all the way through John's writing. Calling the faithful to be separated from the worldly agenda. Joy comes from finding grace within our troubles for falling deeply into the tension that is in the struggle. Verse 14 reminds us that we do not belong to the world, just as Jesus and his disciples did not belong to the world. With vulnerability and honesty, we need to reshape our questions, and our prayers to God so that joy may be made complete in us. Lawyer and activist Sherry Mitchell in the story shares the ancient perspective held by the Native peoples. She says that we all originate from the same divine source. During challenging times such as these, we tend to become lost in the unfolding stories of our own individualized realities. The greatest act of selflessness is to become aware that we are but a droplet within the ocean. We are a spirit vibrating energy within the spiritual universe. We are here to have the physical experience. So the grace in this scripture, the grace in this scripture is that we are sent into the world through the truth to others to share the joy that is complete in us because of God's faith in us and ours in God. Jesus prayed for God to act on behalf of the disciples. God still acts today on our behalf. God's grace is intertwined with our joy. Yes, for it is with this attitude of gratitude that we can cultivate deep sustaining joy. Daily practices of kindness, saying and thinking positively, using our energy in productive ways, paying it forwards at Starbucks, through actively practicing gratitude, we invite joy into our lives, building a deep, solid foundation on which to be in this world. Each day as we pass through our experiences, we need to be mindful to pause, to see the signs around us, the beautiful signs. Each beautiful creative wonder is good and therefore is God. In fragments of your ancient name, Joyce Rupp writes of this relationship with God, the one true relationship that can evoke deep joy. She writes, when faith takes on a form and a shape, when duty turns into welcome responsibility, when love accepts both ease and struggle, when prayer includes a heart of acceptance, when living results in more giving than getting, when silence serves as a source of listening, when dying no longer frightens or dismays, when emptiness 
leads to paradoxal fullness. Then we know how it is to engage with you as the joyful journeyer on our road of life. Jesus models for us how to pray, to direct our words personally to God, as shown in this scripture passage today. At the end of the inner voice of love, the great theologian Henri Nouwen writes of how God wants to see us come closer, to experience the joy and presence of the Eternal One. Each and every day we have a choice to make, to choose for the truth of what we know, that what is of God does endure. And this is our source and our reason for life. Joy sustains us and transcends this world. Sister Joyce Rupp reminds us in prayer seeds, not to hurry the soul's metamorphosis, to trust in the maturation of some essential growth, to remain confident, keep focused on the risen one, breathe in the possibility of some new joy for it hides in this very moment, readying itself to slip past the stone. We are born for joy. Joy is our birthright and our heritage. Church consultant and preacher Kenny Callahan tells the story of the time he was given a picture of Christ smiling. He says it is a wonderful picture, one that helps him know that we are the Christmas people, the people of wonder and joy. We are the Easter people, the people of new life and hope. Yes, we are the people of the cross, and we can have a sense of joy that God so loved the world and us that God sent Jesus, the one who continues to be Christ with us. We are the people of Pentecost, our celebration theme for next week, a people of great compassion and grace, community and hope. Amidst the difficulties and tragedies that abound, God continues to bless us with grace, compassion and hope. We are sustained by God's love. We have sustaining joy through God's grace. We do not belong to the world. We belong to God. And so our joy is made complete. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray together as the people of God. Loving and redeeming God, you are the one who saves. You are the light of our world, the joy of our desire. We thank you for the gifts you freely give to us. We are grateful for the life that you grant us. We search our hearts and seek your forgiveness for opportunities not taken, for care not given, for sorrow not shared, for love not offered, for joy not celebrated. Forgive us, we pray. We remember those who are less fortunate than us, those whose hearts are in need of you, those whose bodies are in distress, and those in our families that we are concerned about, those who are suffering physically, emotionally, spiritually, those in our communities that are being treated unfairly, those in our world that are marginalized, broken, afraid. We ask your presence to be known to each and every one. And we believe you are the one who takes all sin away. You are giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Fountain of the joy of living, ocean depths of happy rest. O oh, gracious God, we seek your healing, your sustaining joy. In the name of the one who taught us to pray with words and song. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Faith in God is our sustaining joy, the joy of our desiring. Let us pray. O Divine Spirit, we are often weak when we should be strong and fall short of keeping your commandments. We become troubled and afraid, especially in these challenging times. We become overwhelmed, consumed by our own insecurities and fears. We lack understanding and compassion. We cause divisions instead of building relationships and connections. Holy Presence, create in us a more loving and joyful spirit. Amen. Joyful, joyful, we adore you, God of glory, life, and love. Hearts unfold like flowers before you, open to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the gloom of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All your works with joy surround you, earth and heaven reflect your rays. Stars and angels sing around you, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, 
sound that praise eternally. You are giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Source of grace and fount of blessing, let your light upon us shine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus, which the morning stars begin. God's own love is reigning o'er us, joining people hand in hand. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of life. Will share her wonderful children's song as part of our closing this week in our service. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. I got the joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Where? Down in my heart. To May the grace of the risen one, the love and joy that comes from being in right relationship with God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. God bless you this week. Amen.